Okay, here we are again with the second part of Sea Cleaner. Uh, the first part, I actually showed you how to clean up your garbage from the system itself, uh, particularly like Windows applications, as you can see. Uh, uh, Firefox over here with the Application Center over here. Uh, if you have any further questions about this, please don't hesitate to contact me, leave a post, uh, comment down here, and uh, I'll respond as quickly as possible. Uh, today is about the registry. The registry itself um, is, is very unique in that it eliminates, the, uh, removes all uh, extensions. All, it removes everything in a registry. It's pretty much junk that's left behind from install. Of, uh, installing and uninstalling different programs and programs that have been installed that have uh, empty registry keys, you know, among other things. It pays to remove all that junk just to go ahead and make your system much faster. Now, uh, here's the tools part. The tools part is very, very significant because as soon as you click on your tools, you'll see uninstall, startup, system restore, and driver wiper. Drive wiper. The uninstall is a good place to go. Usually Windows or Mac or whatever type of computer system you're using has the ability to uninstall programs, whereas CCleaner goes a little bit farther than uh, some of the other things because you'll find, uh, particularly in Windows sometimes, whether it's Windows or Vista or Windows 7, sometimes it leaves behind the actual program name here. And what happens is if it does that, if you've uninstalled it, you can come over here and delete the actual entry itself to clean it up. And then you go back to your registry and clean up from there just in case everything, anything is left behind. Uh, you can also rename entries if it's an inappropriate name that you don't recognize somewhere within your system itself. You can come over here and re click on this, rename entry, rename it so you can identify it and you know what it is. So it's not hiding someplace and you can't find it later when you're trying to uninstall it. Okay, um, if you look, as you know, you can click over here and run your uninstaller and uninstall any program contained within this particular area here. And these are all your programs on your system itself. Startup is, is, is pretty nifty because of the fact that a lot of people who start up their systems, they're finding that, that it, it's really slow. And, and I hear a lot of people after they buy a new computer, after several months later, saying, Man, my system is so slow. What am I going to do now? Well, uh, or why is it so slow? Well, it's because you've installed so many programs, and the programs have set up self-installers, whereas uh, when you actually turn your computer system on, you boot it up, and what happens is, is all these programs are installing at the same time that your system is booting up, and that's the reason why it's taking so long to get where it's supposed to go. If you look at these programs, it may look like a lot. There's very, very few here. I've, you know, I, I cut it down. Anytime I install a program, I make sure nothing is left behind that I don't want left behind, or nothing is is contained within this area right here, which is your startup area. And these are all the programs that are going to start up instantly when you boot your system up. And these are particular programs as you look at, like you know, I use Skype all the time, so I leave the Skype here and the Skype phone because I use it daily. As soon as it it, it, it pops up, I like it to minimize my tray so if anybody pops in and, and I frequently have people who do pop in uh, especially individuals I give uh, tutorials to and uh, I find that those people uh, need to have that type of access and I give it to them so I make sure this is right here it's minimized in my tray and I can see it when they are popped up I can see how many people actually left a message as well and other such programs that I use if I don't use the program, believe me, the program is going to remove from here. How do I remove the program from here? Well, it's very simple. A holiday program, such as if it's Jet Start, I'll come over here, and you got two options. You can disable it or you delete it. If you don't use it on a daily basis, I suggest you delete that program. Just get rid of it. Because if you just disable it, next time I open up Jet Start, it's going to automatically embed that program in the Start menu again, and it's going to start up every time I reboot my system. So the best thing to do is to delete it all together. Then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, you can actually, here, you can right-click also, and you can save something to a text file, such as if I'm doing this, and I hit my Control key, or I should say my Shift key, and push down my arrow all the way to the bottom, like so. Okay, I can right-click on this, and I can save all this to a text file. So when I actually do this, and I save it to a text file, 
it bounds up and it asks me where I want to place that text file. So that means I can take a, a closer look at it. Say if I want to look at something and I don't know what it is and I want to go ahead and, and, and uh, copy it and stick it out there on my browser so I can identify what that program is, I mean it may be malware, maybe something stuck in your system that you don't know about that's popping up all the time and it's right in your start menu. So what you do is you go ahead and put it in your browser and that particular program or the exec file or whatever, it's going to pop up, indicate what it is, what the use for it is, and whether or not it's a problem right there or whether you even need it here. So that gives you an opportunity to remove it or to keep it on. If, it, if I can't use it on a daily basis and it's in here, I'm going to remove it. Period. I'm going to disable it. I'm going to delete it. I'm not going to disable it. I'm going to delete it. But it's up to you whether you want to disable it so it comes up next time or whatever when you restart the program. Okay. And then you have Internet Explorer over here. You have all these over here, and you're looking at what you have that, that, that are extensions for Internet Explorer. Okay. Whether you use these extensions or help menu or whatever, such as, you know, what you're going to actually use. Like I use Snagit on a daily basis, I have Snagit uh, set up as an extension there and it's a helper and what happens is I can click on it it'll open up automatically and I can use Snagit or for instance if I use AVG okay uh, in checking things in that regard on my system when I'm using it in Explorer I don't use it in Explorer, Explorer very often that's not my browser of choice mine is uh, Firefox Mozilla okay, that's my browser of choice it's up to you as to what browser you wish to use but if you do use Internet Explorer I suggest you go through here and you can also delete it or disable it. It's up to you. Okay. And then another very powerful, powerful tool is System Restore. If I click on my System Restore, these are all my restore dates here. Whereas I was running in a few problems with Skype, it leaves particular areas over here. How much? What happens is, is this takes up each one of these a lot of space on your hard drive. Okay. And I have I have seen some people with system restore points from here for a couple of years, and what happens is you don't need them anymore. Keep an actual system restore point, keep an where you re restored the system on here, or you, or actually where you set up a restore point or designated your own restore point. Leave it on here, and a lot of times when Windows installs other uh, of its many many pro, uh, you know updates to the programs that exist on your system or adds new ones what happens is it sets up a restore point you know which is a good thing because if the system ever crashed because of a windows update what you do is you go ahead and you just go back to the time when it was running good before the installation was uh, you know uh, took place so in this case say for instance i put home over here it's on dated january 21st 2012 at 201 uh, um, colon 38 uh, remove skype 5.5 okay so what I'm going to do is the last instance is right here. Okay, it's going to show you everything except for the latest one is disabled by default. You know, for the safety of the system, so you remove the most recent. Say if somebody wants to remove them all, it's not going to remove that particular one. That way, if you want, you know, you have to have some restore point, something to get back to if your system is acting funny. Okay, so over here you can actually take this right here, and when you click on it, click go down here, and click remove. Okay, and it's going to ask you, all selected restore points will be removed. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Doesn't mean all, just the one you selected. I'm going to click OK, yes. So it's going to, and there it is, it's gone. Actually, what it did, it added more memory to my system. And I'll tell you what, some people have so many restore points I've seen where I've actually deleted uh, several, on, several on a, a friend's computer. And it brought him more than 15 gig of byte, more than 15 gig of restore space. And I've seen others even more. So really take a look at this here, this particular area, to find out whether or not there is something you should really remove or keep. You know, it's up to you. It's all up to you. And then you have something over here. It's called Drive Wiper. Okay. Drive Wiper, I suggest you don't use because if you click on C drive which is normally the drive that houses everything that you have and you'll see that it is right here and you wipe that drive everything is gone and if you go seven passes you're never going to get it back I don't care what you do you're not going to get it back simple as that you can go up to 35 passes it's not coming back okay and say for instance I got a test drive and it's stubborn, a little flash drive, and it's stubborn. It just won't remove, you know, whatever is on that system. And I want it to really get it off of there 
So I'll go to that particular, uh, say if it's uh, removable drive J. Okay, so I'll click on that. I'll click my wipe and I'll remove it, everything that's on there. But I suggest at this point, unless you really know what you're doing, don't use drive wiper because it could have some results where you're standing there looking at everything on your system being removed and wiped away forever. Okay, it's very powerful. Leave it alone. All right. Uh, you have another one, which is your options. I think I'll go ahead and go over your options on the next video.